Hello everyone, this is Mr. B. Hill. Today we're going to be talking about polynomials. So polynomials, we've already talked about these, or simple versions of these things already. Uh, we mentioned binomials, meaning two terms, trinomials, three terms. Polynomials, well, the prefix poly just means many. So it could be as few as one, but as many as you want, really. But the basic idea is that polynomial means many terms. And so if we look at some simple examples that we've already looked at so far, something like y equals 5. That's actually a polynomial. There is one term here, 5. Now, this term does not have another variable in it, no independent variable, no x. So therefore, this thing is never changing. So what we call here, this thing is called a constant polynomial. And actually, since it only has one term in it, the prefix mono means one. So this is called a constant monomial. We also say this thing has degree zero. And there are some notes up on the website if you want to look at those. Degree zero, the degree of a polynomial is really just the highest power of x that you see in the equation, or the expression if we're just talking about an expression here. But these are we're looking at polynomial functions. So y equals 5. We could think of this as putting 5 times x to the power of 0, because anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So really, the highest power of x that you see on this right-hand side is 0. We could then move up and say, let's look at something like y is equal to, I don't know, 2x plus 1. We've seen this before, or things like this, right? 2x plus 1. The highest power of x that we see here is just 1, so this would be a degree 1 polynomial. And it has two terms, so this would be a binomial. But if it's degree 1, we also say that the thing is linear. So this is a linear binomial. So we say that this thing has degree 1. Degree 1, we say we, it has the special name of linear. Degree 0 has a special name of constant. Moving up one more degree, we have things like this. y is equal to, say, 3x squared plus 2x and minus 5. Why not? And we all know what these things are called. If we have a squaring in it, we call these things quadratic. So this would be a quadratic and three terms. So it's a trinomial. Quadratic means degree 2. And before we move on, let's just look at what these things really look like a little bit. And so we can do that on a calculator here. So if we just want to graph these, so a constant, let's say y equals 5. Graph that, and there we go. We see just a horizontal line. Okay, and so that's a constant function. The y is always constant, it's staying the same. Switch up, and of course, we know what linears look like, right? 2x plus 1. Again, it's a straight line, but now we have a non-zero slope. So linears are always going to be straight lines with some non-zero slope. Constant polynomials are horizontal lines, so have slope 0. And of course, quadratics, we know what these look like. Let's see here, 3 times x squared plus 2 times x minus 5. Let's graph that one. And there we see the standard parabola shape. But we can go a little bit further with this. So degree 2 means we have the highest power of x being 2. A degree 3 would be something like this. y is equal to, let's say, x cubed minus 4x squared uh, minus, or let's go 4x cubed. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x. Yeah, minus 1. This will work. Sorry about that. This would be a cubic polynomial. 
because there is a cubing function going on in here. And this has one, two, three, four terms. So it's a cubic polynomial with four terms. We don't have any special names for anything above three, really. Well, you kind of do, but we're not going to deal with that. And if you want to see what a cubic looks like, let's go here, clear this one out. So it's going to be x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. And zoom standard. Let me make sure my axes are right. Oh, interesting. Okay. So this thing goes up, then curves, goes back down, and then goes up again. The kind of neat thing here is there's this pattern. So we kind of have two kind of bumps in this graph, whereas with the quadratic, the parabola, we only had one bump. So that's how this thing kind of goes. So as you increase the degree of a polynomial, you basically increase the number of bumps in the graph of it. But we can even go further if we want to. Let's try a fourth degree. So cubic polynomial, this means it's of degree three. Degree three has a special name of cubic. Above degree three, we don't have any special names yet. Well, I kind of do, but you don't hear them too often. So fourth degree, let's try this one. Y is equal to x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x and what the heck, minus 1. This is a degree 4 polynomial. Sometimes we call this a quartic, but usually just say it's degree 4. Uh, and now it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So it's degree 4 and it has 5 terms. And that's how we classify polynomials, by the degree and by the number of terms. If you want to see what a quartic looks like, or a fourth degree polynomial, let's clear that out here. So we're looking at x to the power of 4 minus 2 times x to the power of 3 minus 3 times x squared plus 2 times x minus 1. And if the pattern continues, we should see three bumps in the graph. And we sure do. See how it comes down, makes one bump right there, turning back up, then it turns and goes back down, and then it turns and goes back up. And that's a standard shape for a fourth degree polynomial. Now, you also notice how we wrote these things. Basically, these are all in what's called standard form. And standard form for a polynomial, all that really means is that we're going from the highest power of x down to the lowest power of x from left to right. So it's the highest power of x going down to the lowest power of x going from left to right. Also, notice that we don't have any like terms to combine here. Standard forms means that the, the like terms have been combined. Now, if we want to do arithmetic with these things, we certainly can. And we've d already done a lot of it so far. If you want to add two polynomials together, all that really means is you're going to combine the like terms. And if we want to multiply two polynomials together, well, we've seen this before. That's going to be a, an application of the distributive property often multiple applications of the distributive property. And we've done a bunch of practice, so I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch more examples of that. But 
the big thing that we really want to get to with polynomials is basically what's called factoring. And factoring is really just undoing the distributive property. And let me show you what I mean by that. First kind of factoring we're going to look at is called factoring out the GCF. And hopefully you remember GCF, that's a little acronym for greatest common factor. You did a bunch of that with just numbers before in your life, but now we can also do the same thing with polynomials. So here's an example. We've got 6x cubed plus 4x squared plus 8x. Three terms. It's a trinomial. And since the highest power of x is 3, this is a cubic trinomial. And what we're going to do first is we're going to figure out the greatest common factor of these terms. So first find the GCF. And the way you do that is we basically write down what are all the factors in each term. So 6 times x cubed, well the 6 is really 2 times 3. We want to write it as a prime factorization. And then the x cubed is really x times x times x. So now we see all the factors in this particular term. I'm going to break it down by prime factorizations for the numbers and then write out all the variable factors like that. The next term we have is 4x squared. So 4 is 2 times 2. Then x squared is just x times x. The 8x well, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, written as a product of prime numbers. And the x is just x. So now, what we want to do is identify the common factors in all of the terms. So, we notice here, 6x cubed contained a factor of 2. So did 4x squared, and so did 8x. So, we could circle those, saying that they each have a 2 in them. These two have another factor of 2, but there isn't another factor of 2 up here, so we don't have any other numerical common factors. But notice that each of them has a factor of x in it. And so the factors that the all terms share, that is going to be the GCF. So here the GCF is just 2 times x. So each of these terms has a factor of 2x in it. And that's the biggest factor that all three terms have. So now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out this common factor. Basically, we're going to undistribute it. So this is going to get a little bit goofy, but we'll notice here. So 6x cubed plus 4x squared plus 8x. Well, that's really equal to the 6x cubed is the 2x times 3x squared. The 4x squared is really 2x times 2x. And 8x is really 2x times 4. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put parentheses around this whole expression. And notice here I've got the GCF of 2x in each of these terms. And we're going to undistribute it. And you can take it out to the front or to the back. It doesn't really matter. But it's always a good idea to draw in your arrows just to so you keep everything straight. So what we now have is 2x is now outside the parentheses, and inside we have what's left in each of those terms. 3x squared plus 2x plus 4. So essentially we've kind of undistributed this 2x now, and we've written this polynomial now as a product of two other polynomials. So this cubic ends up becoming a linear here, 2 times x, because the highest power of x right here in this particular factor is 1. So it's a linear, or degree 1. 
multiplied by this quadratic or degree two. And so a linear times a quadratic gives us a cubic, or a degree one times a degree two gives us a degree three. And you might recall back from, remember the product rule, a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. We end up adding the two exponents together. Same kind of thing here. When you're multiplying polynomials together, you end up actually adding the degrees to get the degree of the result. And that's the basics of factoring out the GCF. And we'll do a bunch of practice like this in class.